as I mentioned, I do want to chat just a little bit about Jared Stidham as well. I, I distinctly remember last year, I, I don't know whether it was after or before, before New England had drafted him, that you, you more than anybody, were incredibly high on him and, and felt that were it not for, similar to what we're talking about with Jake Fromm, were it not for that last year at Auburn when he played behind what to me might have been the worst offensive line I've ever seen in, in big time college football, <laughs> that, that he, he might have been a first round pick on, on, on talent level. Yeah, I, I did think that. I really did. Coming into Jarrett's senior year, I thought he had, or his junior year, I thought he had a chance to be a first round pick. Um, talk about natural with Jordan Love. I mean, I, I said it last year. Jarrett Stidham looks like he came out of the womb throwing a football. I mean, yeah. it's so effortless for him. Um, he really, he, he's an elite thrower. He is an absolute elite thrower. Uh, you know, they had a, they didn't have a great, uh, his junior season, things didn't come together like, you know, probably they hoped or Jarrett hoped. Um, but, you know, the great thing was he, you know, you go to the bowl game when, when uh, Gus Melzon took over the play calling duties and they, they set the all time bowl record in the first half against Purdue and scored 56 points in one half. Um, I think that's probably what Jarrett would have done all season, not to that level, it, you know, obviously not to that extreme, but um, I think that offense would have looked a lot different if uh, Gus would have been calling the plays all season. And, you know, I've had people try to shoot that down and say, well, that was Purdue. Well, you know, that's the, to me, my comeback to that is that's the same Purdue defense that made Dwayne Haskins look like an undraftable player. Um, you know, Ohio State lost on the road at Purdue that year. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, no, Jared, Jared's extremely – we had him at the Senior Bowl. He's an extreme, extremely mature young man, um, extremely bright, uh, loves football, is around it all the time. I think last year in New England was great for him. He got to spend a year with Tom Brady and, and go through an offseason with Brian Hoyer. Um, two guys that have, have played in that system and, you know, played 30 plus years in the NFL. So he was groomed the right way. Um, you know, he looked really good in the preseason, but preseason, the preseason, but it was nice that he was able to sit that year and didn't have that pressure of playing right away. Uh, and I just think the way he throws the football and his mind and his work ethic, uh, I think he's the, I think he's the uh, successor to Tom Brady. I think they, you know, they brought Brian Hoyer back and I, I agree with the move. Um, it's a great to have a, have him back in the system, especially because those two guys got along so well. You really solidified that quarterback room. But to me, Jarrett Stidham's the uh, future of that position in New England. Yeah, and, and is he also another guy who, who again, illustrates how circumstances need to be applied to, to, the, to this draft process as well? I mean, you look at his career. He was the all-everything kid in high school who was a big, big recruit for Baylor. His career was going great at Baylor until everything that happened to that program. And then he goes to a, a big program in Auburn. But maybe, you know, it's a run-heavy offense, even with Malzahn calling the players. They had some problems on the offensive line. You know, it, quarterbacks are only human, aren't they? they? They need the right elements around them. And that, and that might have been overlooked a little bit and, and the reason why he drops to the fourth round. Yeah, no, you, you, you're absolutely right. No, you're absolutely right. It's, it's, it's a lot. Of, it's very circumstantial. Same thing when they get to the NFL. I mean, you look at certain quarterbacks when they get in, um, there's so much turnover. I, I just I, I spent some time recently with Daniel Jones, the quarterback for the New York Giants. And, you know, Daniel did some great things last year as a rookie for the Giants, but now he's heading into year two and they've got a new coaching staff. Yeah. So, you know, he's, he's going to have to learn a whole new system in – you know, in what looks like we may not have an off-season program. You know, I mean, he's he's trying to get his receivers together to throw. Um, you know, but there it's not a coordinated thing. You know, at the team facility, they're not with the coaching staff. They're trying to teach this system to themselves. Um, so that that really stunts a quarterback's development as well. So yeah, there's 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 no doubt what what happened to uh, to Jarrett. You know, but you know he grew from it too. You can, you can look at it two ways. Yeah, it kind of derailed the Baylor thing. Kind of derailed him a little bit, and things at Auburn didn't go you know quite quite as anyone expected. But you know, like you say, you go back to that sophomore year. He beats Alabama. He beats Georgia. Uh, I was at the Georgia game when he beats a really good Georgia team. So he did win. He did win some big games. He played in a lot of big environments, and and he grew from it. I mean, you talk to Jarrett. I mean, everything that happened has got him to this point in his life, and. And that's one of the reasons you like not just quarterbacks, but any player coming out, you try to gauge what adversity they've gone through in life and, and how they've been able to handle it. And, uh, you know, Jarrett's, Jarrett's had some rough spots, and it's not just uh, with football. I mean, there's been some, some personal things in Jarrett's, uh, Jarrett's background that he's had to deal with that 
um, not many kids have. And, and, he, and that's what's made him so mature. So I think he's ready for the job. I mean, that, being a starting quarterback in the NFL is a really big job. Um, but I think Jarrett's totally equipped to be that guy. Is there any part of you as well, having been around Bill Belichick, that, that gets the feeling that he views him as being ready for the job as well? Or maybe if not ready for the job, not necessarily willing to wait, you know, it's clear that Tom Brady was signing a two-year contract. I mean, what's what interests me with Belichick is throughout his career, he's spotted trends in the league and taken advantage of that. And one, one of them to me right now seems to be that if you can get that window of a quarterback on one of these rookie contracts who's cheap for a few years, then you, you can really begin to build something there. And, and you know, if, if they waited it out another two years and, and thought Stidham was the guy, then suddenly he's going into year four and they're going to have to pay him as well if he has a good year four. So do you think that, do you think Stidham at all has played a part in, in Belichick's decision-making in this? Um, you know, I would, you would have to think so. I think, uh, I think you're on with that assessment. Um, you know, like any quarterback, Jared's gonna. If Jared is the guy to start next year, I mean, there, there's gonna be some bumps in the road. I mean, that's yeah. just that's just normal. I mean, you go back, you look at all the even the great ones. I mean, Peyton Manning led the league in interceptions. Troy Aikman was one in fifteen his rookie year. I mean, that you know, first year guys. I mean, it's it's a really big job. It's a really hard job. So there's gonna be some rocky points, but um, but I think they know what they have in terms of the talent. And you at some point. No, I mean, no guy is, is just completely ready to take over a football team and, and go 13 and three or 14 and two, unless they have an incredible pieces around him, kind of like Roethlisberger did his rookie year with Pittsburgh. But yeah. um, that was just, a, that was a phenomenal football team that they had in Pittsburgh that year. So, um, so there's going to be bumps in the road, but, but there's no, no better time than now. I mean, Jarrett's not going to be any more ready a year from now than he is right now. I mean, he went through a whole season. He knows the system, everything's staying the same. Uh, so at some point you just got to get him on the field and let him take the reps. And just a final question, I guess as well, that the good thing for New England is he has spent a year watching, you know, the best of all time do it at close quarters as well. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty sound introduction. The greatest coach of all time, probably still there, but also that year around Brady could be massive for him as well. Yeah, there's no doubt. No, I mean, that's again, and, and, and because of who Jarrett is, you know that he was taken to Tom Brady. You know, there's some guys that wouldn't be mature enough if they're the backup quarterback. They might be out living the living the uh, living the NFL lifestyle and 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 not really soaking it in. But Jared's such a mature guy, and he's he's a married guy. Um, so I know that he he took that year. Just talking to the guys in New England, he he really took that year and applied himself and and really let Tom take him under his wing and and learn from him. And so. Yeah, I know there was a, a ton of takeaways from Jared. You couldn't have a better crash course in the NFL as a rookie than, than playing under Tom Brady.